traveled here now many ways to praise the one true God. And all of us have parts to play to praise the one true God. So we sing, Father, Spirit, Son, you are God, one true Come in pain to praise the one true God. Be yourself with us today to praise the one true God. So we sing, Father, Spirit, Son. Sizes come to praise the one true God. We join together, old and young, to praise the one true God. So bring your gifts, and I'll bring mine to praise the one true God. Through our differences, we'll shine to praise the one true God. So we sing, Father, Spirit, Son. Good morning and welcome to Live at 10 this Sunday on that slightly cryptic theme of sourdough. And just to say that uh, there is private prayer in All Saints Church at 2 till 4 this afternoon, Wednesday 6 till 8, and that will continue through the next couple of weeks while I am away from parish duties. And today and in the next two Sundays there will be Holy Communion at five o'clock at St James please do register via the parish office um, there'll be no Wednesday Communion for the next couple of weeks owing to the availability of people and our, our ability to put that on so really I suppose the summary of that there is still morning and evening prayer on zoom on Tuesdays and Thursdays live at 10 will take place each Sunday uh, Holy Communion on a Sunday at five and private prayer on Sundays and Wednesdays. And so we gather, we gather before our constant God, despite the fact that we are separated out still, we gather in spirit. And do join with the words in yellow if they will help you in your worship this morning. The Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and shout for joy, giving God the glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. And our prayer for today. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, Give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Jesus, well, it says, as it says here, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So let's just share in that peace one with another. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. 
So now we come to another song as we lead into looking at God's word. Spirit, lead us deeper into truth, to know you more, to light the way. What a prayer that is in that song, to receive our daily bread through the word, just to have our hearts opened, our lives changed by the revelation of word in spirit. And so, sourdough, that cryptic, slightly cryptic uh, theme for this service. Anyway, what's that all about? Well, there's a side of saying uh, thank you to Paul Hollywood, of all people, for getting me into the whole idea of sourdough. I started making sourdough and in that there has been a whole load of reflection, thinking about what it's about, Um, thinking about leaven, that sort of um, King James Version word that's used to describe yeast. In Matthew 13, 33, one of the shorter parables of Jesus, he told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. And in that scripture, I was thinking, well, what is the leaven? And actually to mix one lot of leaven with three lots of yeast suggests to me it was probably something like sourdough 
a bit like this my sourdough starter very pleased with that my my pet if you want to uh, put it that way how did that start well it started with some flour some water and a few organic grapes and then this little thing of life a minor miracle perhaps of life happens as flour water and a few organic grapes turn to this yeasty sourdough starter thing as it starts to froth to bubble with life to smell a little bit sour the first one i made wasn't as successful um, probably all went a bit quickly and rather than smelling sour i'm afraid it went a little bit rancid but this one i have here seems to be the proper thing and this yeast this starter this thing um, that jesus compared the kingdom of god to it's an amazing thing because it's a living thing as a living thing if i just leave my starter here if i just leave it in the jar walk away and do nothing with this then it will die it will just stop being what it is it will die and it can be refreshed it's not permanently gone but it would not do what it's meant to do and if we are representatives of that kingdom then perhaps we need something done to us and what do i do to my sourdough starter well i feed it every once in a while i take some out and i either make a loaf of bread with it or if i'm not ready to do that i throw it away i like prune it as it were get it ready for the next thing and then i feed it with a mixture of water and flour and in my mind there's a parable in that water the spirit flour the word the food feeding it the kingdom of god with spirit with word with prayer with bible if we are to sow the kingdom of god as sourdough starter as natural yeast as this thing that will go through the whole batch and will grow and grow and grow and i'm, I'm going to show off to make something like my sourdough bread here which i will probably enjoy later on if we are to make these things if we are to see this happen this life this adventure this fullness then it needs to be fed water flower spirit word prayer bible sourdough doesn't always act as expected it's not like this this is um your sort of standard packet yeast you're fast acting let's get it done let's do something and i make bread with that as well and it's probably more reliable than the sourdough it does more often what I expect whereas this sourdough to get that loaf of bread requires patience it's a slower process we mix the flour and the starter and water and salt together and then wait and wait for hours and hours and hours for it to start to grow to double in size to then knock it back to then put it into the proper basket and then to leave it to do it again for eight to 12 hours for a long time it's a slow process which takes place overnight while I'm having a doze usually and then to be baked and made into bread it needs attention it needs looking after and another thing with this sourdough starter actually if I put it in the fridge it will become inactive it's still there it's still got the yeast in it it's still got all of the potential to grow to make that loaf of bread to do everything it should but it sits and does nothing there is a danger of us hiding inside churches i'm not saying don't go to church i'm not saying that at all but there is a danger that we allow our church to become a little bit like the fridge at times it's a place where we go and we're out of sight and perhaps one of the promises of this current season of being pushed out of churches is that we can stay out in appropriate ways in the best ways in mission taking our starter our yeasty starter of the kingdom with us and putting it around and seeing what happens and seeing where the growth where the life comes leaven or yeast appears elsewhere in scripture as well it appears all over the place and it's quite a um, but just a little bit in 1 corinthians 1 corinthians 5 verse 6 your boasting is not a good thing says paul do you not know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough clean out the old yeast so that you may be a new batch as you really are unleavened for our paschal lamb christ has been sacrificed 
Therefore, let us celebrate the festival, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So here Paul is saying, get rid of all yeast, the yeast, the old things of malice and evil, and become purified, become holy, become made whole in Christ. So there, yeah, the decision here is, what is the leaven in my life? Because there is leaven, there's leaven in all of us. There's, there are things that are growing in our lives like yeast, that are filling us corner to corner, whether we realise they're there or not. Is it the yeast of the kingdom of God? Or is it the yeast of the world? Is it the leaven of the world that drives our attitudes, drives our behaviours? Is it the yeast of God's love but also God's holiness, God's sanctity that includes in that conviction for things we do wrong by the Holy Spirit coming down upon us and just pointing out gently and lovingly look that just isn't right or is it the yeast of self-justification, self-righteousness are those the governing things? In a moment we'll move to prayer and I've deliberately moved our confession to after this because I think that's part of our response is just to have a moment to go what is the driving thing what is the leaven in my life and perhaps to try and lay down some of those things and pick up good kingdom yeast in their place but I think also the other side of response is I why not make sourdough? I'll tell you, it, it's great. I, I love the way of all bread making because it just does something fantastic to my mind. And sourdough starter is pretty easy to get going. And I can share a recipe with you if you'd like that. I've actually got more than I need. So if you would like a bit of sourdough starter, I can't give too much away, otherwise I'll run out. But if you would like some sourdough starter, get in touch and perhaps I can grow it up, grow it up, grow it up and then give it away a bit more. And in that, perhaps take it, watch what it does while praying, while spending time with Jesus and just be astonished at what his, the depth of what his parable about the kingdom of God as yeast meant. Amen. And so now, as I say, we come to prayer and starting with um, these words of confession. So what are the things in life that are the yeast of the world? the things about self in each of our lives, the things that, the, the automatic reactions of, oh, they're wrong, I'm right, the automatic reactions of rejection, of they're different, the they rather than the we. And in that we come. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. And now we get the joy because we can receive wholeness, shalom, peace and forgiveness for those things where we have stepped aside that we have offered to God. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us and by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue now in some short prayers. Let's pray. 
and make your ways known upon earth, Lord God, your saving power among all peoples. Renew your church in holiness and help us to serve you with joy. Guide the leaders of this and every nation that justice may prevail throughout the world. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Make us instruments of your peace, and let your glory be over all the earth. And we join our prayers in the words Jesus taught us. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now, after our prayers, let's just take a short opportunity to affirm our faith, to declare something of our faith, one with another. We say together in faith, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father who created all things, for by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son who was slain, for with his blood he purchased us for God from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And so we draw towards the end of our short time together this morning with prayers of blessing. And then there will be a, a song before a final dismissal and then an opportunity for a bit of a classic hymn, Fight the Good Fight, after that. But let's pray a closing prayer. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And say these words, Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son, Jesus Christ, has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. In the light of your mercy, we offer up our lives, all we are for you. In the power of your spirit, a living sacrifice. Talents and gifts, our kindness and care, the knowledge we share, the money we make, all our small steps of faith. In the light of your mercy, we offer up our lives, all we are for you. In the power of your spirit, a living sacrifice. Our 
joy in our tears, our failings and flaws. For you see it all, the whole of our lives. We offer through Christ, may our worship be true, bringing glory to you. In the light of your mercy, we offer up our lives, all we are for you. In the power of your spirit, a living sacrifice, all we are for you. All we are for you. All we are for you. So I have sourdough bread to eat. And we come to the end of our time together. But go in peace to spread the leaven of the kingdom wherever you are and to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. God bless. Live at 10, we'll be back next week and I will see you in a couple of weeks time. Have a good couple of weeks and see you when I am back from holiday.